As your morning alarm rings, you mutter to yourself, why did I set it this early? While brushing your teeth, you think, I need a haircut, or do I? Rushing out the front door, you reach for your keys and realize they're not there. Frustrated, you shout, I can't do anything right, only to spot your neighbor watching with a knowing smile. Being caught talking to yourself can feel embarrassing, and some people even wrongly view this behavior as a sign of mental instability. But decades of psychology research show that talking to yourself is completely normal. In fact, most, if not all of us, engage in some form of self-talk every single day. So why do we talk to ourselves? And does what we say matter? Self-talk refers to the narration inside your head, sometimes called inner speech. It differs from mental imagery or recalling facts and figures. Specifically, psychologists define self-talk as verbalized thoughts directed toward yourself or a specific aspect of life. This includes personal conversations like, I need to work on my free throw. But it also includes reflections you have throughout the day, like, the gym is crowded tonight, I'll come back tomorrow. And while most self-talk in adults tends to be silent, speaking to yourself out loud also falls into this category. In fact, psychologists believe our first experiences with self-talk are mostly vocal, as children often speak to themselves out loud as they play. In the 1930s, Russian psychologist Lev Vygotsky hypothesized that this kind of speech is actually crucial to development. By repeating conversations they've overheard or participated in with adults, children practice managing their behaviors and emotions on their own. Then, as they grow older, this outward self-talk tends to become internalized, morphing into a private inner dialogue. We know this internal self-talk is important and can help you plan, work through difficult situations, and even motivate you throughout the day. But studying self-talk can be difficult. It relies on study subjects clearly tracking behavior that's spontaneous and often done without conscious control. Scientists are still trying to answer some basic questions due to these challenges. They wonder, why do some talk to themselves more than others? What areas of the brain are activated during self-talk? And how does this activation differ from the normal conversation? One thing we know for certain, however, is that what you say in these conversations can have real impacts on your attitude and performance. Positive instructional or motivational self-talk can increase focus, boost self-esteem, and help tackle everyday tasks. For example, one study of college tennis players found that incorporating instructional self-talk into practice increased their concentration and accuracy. And just as chatting to a friend can help decrease stress, speaking directly to yourself may also help you regulate your emotions. This technique, known as distanced self-talk, involves speaking to yourself as if you're addressing another person. Instead of, I'm going to crush this exam, you might think, Alex, you are prepared for this test. I am prepared. One study found that this kind of self-talk was especially beneficial for reducing stress when engaging in anxiety-inducing tasks, such as meeting new people or public speaking. But where positive self-talk can help you, negative self-talk can harm you. Most people are critical of themselves occasionally, but when this behavior gets too frequent or excessively negative, it can become toxic. High levels of negative self-talk are often predictive of anxiety in children and adults. And those who constantly blame themselves for their problems and ruminate on those situations typically experience more intense feelings of depression. Fortunately, we can train our inner voice. Today, there's a field of psychological treatment called Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, or CBT, which is partially focused on regulating the tone of self-talk. Cognitive behavioral therapists often teach strategies to identify cycles of negative thoughts and replace them with neutral or more compassionate reflections. Over time, these tools can improve one's mental health. So the next time you find yourself chatting with yourself, remember to be kind. That inner voice will be with you for life. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up if you found this video helpful and subscribe for more insights. Until next time, take care.